In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve this particular exponential equation, which can be quite challenging. But for those of you who want to try this problem, feel free to pause the video and work on it. So let's begin. Since we have two fractions separated by an equal sign, I recommend that we begin by cross multiplying the two fractions. So this is going to be 10 times 4 raised to the x minus 4 raised to the negative x. And that's going to equal 5 times 3, which is 15. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to divide both sides by 10. On the right side, we can reduce the fraction 15 over 10. 15 is 5 times 3. 10 is 5 times 2. So 15 over 10 reduces to 3 over 2. So this is what we now have. What do you think we need to do next? What is our next step? What we need to do is adjust the equation a bit. 4 raised to the x is equal to 4 raised to the 2x divided by 4 raised to the 1x. Here's why. Just to review exponents, we know that x to the 7th divided by x to the 3rd is equal to x to the 4th. When you divide, you need to subtract the exponents. 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. 2x minus 1x is equal to x. So we can replace 4 to the x with 4 to the 2x over 4 to the 1x because they're mathematically equivalent. And so that's what we're going to do. So we have 4 raised to the 2x divided by 4 raised to the x. Now, what can we do with 4 raised to the negative x? Just to review negative exponents, let's say if you have 7 raised to the negative 4, this is the same as 1 over 7 to the 4. So you can move the base number in the bottom of a fraction, and this will allow you to change the sign of the exponent from negative to positive, or vice versa. So 4 to the negative x is equivalent to 1 over 4 to the x. By moving the 4 to the bottom of the fraction, we could change negative x to positive x. So we now have minus 1 over 4 to the x, and that's going to equal 3 over 2. Now, notice that the denominators of these two fractions are the same. Because of that, we can combine it into a single fraction. So we're going to have 4 raised to the 2x minus 1 over 4 raised to the x, and that's going to equal 3 over 2. Now, what do you think we need to do next? What I recommend doing is multiplying both sides by 4 to the x. So this will get rid of the fraction on the left side because those two will cancel. So this is what we now have. Now, I want to get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to have 2 times 4 raised to the 2x, and then 2 times negative 1, that's going to be negative 2, and that's going to equal 3 times 4 raised to the x. Now let's take this term and move it to this side. So we're going to have 2 times 4 raised to the 2x minus 3 times 4 to the x minus 2 is equal to 0. So maybe at this point, you see where this problem is going. At this point, we can factor this exponential equation. But we're going to have to do something first. We're going to, excuse me, we're going to need to make a substitution. So let's pick a variable. Let's use a. We're going to say that a is equal to 4 raised to the x. If that's the case, a squared is going to be 4 raised to the x squared. When you raise one exponent to another exponent, you need to multiply. So x times 2 is just 2x. Thus, a squared is equivalent 
to 4 raised to the 2x. So let's replace this 4 to the 2x with a squared. And let's replace 4 raised to the x with a. So this is going to be 2a squared minus 3 times a minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, this looks a lot easier to deal with. We have a trinomial with a leading coefficient that's not 1. How can we factor this trinomial? The first thing that we need to do in order to factor the trinomial is multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. So that's 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Next, we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 4, but add to the middle coefficient, minus 3. So those two numbers are going to be negative 4 and 1. Negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4, but negative 4 plus positive 1 is negative 3. So what we're going to do at this point, now that we have our two numbers, we're going to replace negative 3a with negative 4a plus 1a. And the reason why we can do that is because negative 3a is mathematically equivalent to negative 4a plus 1a. They have the exact same value, just a different representation. So now at this point, what we can do is something called factoring by grouping. In the first two terms, we're going to take out the GCF, the greatest common factor, which is going to be 2a. 2a squared divided by 2a is a. And negative 4a divided by 2a is negative 2. In the last two terms, the only thing that we can factor is a 1. So that's just going to give us a minus 2. If these two are the same, then you're on the right track. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a minus 2. If we take away a minus 2 from this term, we're left with 2a. And if we factor out a minus 2 from that term, we're left with plus 1. Now let's uh, get rid of this. Our next step is to set each factor equal to 0 using the zero product property. So we're going to have a minus 2 is equal to 0. And the second factor, 2a plus 1, equal to 0. Now for each of these two equations, we need to solve for the value of a. For the first one, we're going to add 2 to both sides. And this is going to give us a is equal to 2. For the second one, we're going to begin by subtracting both sides by 1. So we're going to get 2a is equal to negative 1. And then dividing both sides by 2, we get that a is equal to negative 1 half. Now keep in mind that when we created this substitution, we set a equal to 4 raised to the x. So if a is equal to 2, that means that 4 raised to the x is equal to 2. And if a is equal to negative 1 half, then 4 to the x must be equal to that. However, whenever you have an exponential equation, it won't give you a negative result unless there's a negative sign in front of the 4 in this example. So 4 to the x will always give you a positive answer, regardless of what x is. For instance, let's say if x is positive 2, 4 squared is 16. If x is negative 2, 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. Both numbers are positive. So an exponential equation should never equal a negative value. So therefore, we could say that 4 to the x cannot be equal to negative 1 half. So we're not going to have two answers for this particular problem. So now let's finish this problem. If 4 to the x is equal to 2, what is the value of x? Now we can replace 4 with 2 squared. 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 squared raised to the x is equal to 2 raised to the 2x. And 2 
is basically 2 to the first power. Notice that since the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal to each other. So we could say that 2x is equal to 1. Therefore, x is equal to 1 half. And this is the answer for the problem. Now going back to the original equation that we had before, we can check to see that our answer is indeed correct by substitution. So let's replace x with 1 half. Four raised to the half, that's the same as the square root of four. So that's two. Four to the negative one half is one over four to the half. And we said that four raised to the half is the square root of four. So this becomes one over two. Now what is two minus one half? Two is basically four over two. Four over two minus a half is three over two. So this right here, 2 minus 0 0.5, that's 1.5 or 3 over 2. So we have 5 over 3 over 2, which equals 10 over 3. Now for the fraction on the left, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 so that these can cancel. 2 times 5 is 10. And so the value on the left side is the same as that on the right side, which means that the answer is indeed 1 half. So that's how you can solve an exponential equation that looks like this.